is former player and All-American and current Oakland Raider Stefan Wisniewski. said about how the recent events that have taken place over the last few months might affect that legacy. A lot of supporters of, of Joe Paterno say that he really didn't do anything wrong and that it shouldn't have any effect on his legacy. Others say that all the good that he has done in his time at Penn State should overshadow what he may have done wrong. <laughs> in my opinion, what happened in the recent events in the firing of Joe Paterno is that this figure who we looked up to as this, this superhuman figure, this, this super legend, that, that he was kind of reduced to the level of a, of a human being like the rest of us, and that's why we hated to see it. But the reality is Joe Paterno was a human being like the rest of us. He didn't make wrong decisions. He did maybe fail to make right decisions like the rest of us do. And like the rest of us do, he's done things in his life that require forgiveness, and he's done things in his life that require redemption. But when I think back on Joe Paterno's legacy, the events that have happened over the last three months won't even cross my mind. When I think back on Joe Paterno's legacy, I'm gonna remember sitting in his kitchen, at his kitchen table, as he recruited me five years ago, eating cookies made by Supac. <laughs> and I remember leaving that meeting, both excited about the prospect of playing at Penn State for Joe Paterno and simultaneously terrified at what he might do to me if I didn't go there in the same place, the same place where my father and uncle both played. I'm also going to remember so many memories. I'm also going to remember when Coach, at age 82, got down an offensive lineman's stance and showed me how to snap a football. <laughs> because I was terrible at it. I'm better now. <laughs> I also remember as a Penn State student walking through Paterno Library, a library that exists only because Joe Paterno loved the university enough to donate billions of dollars for it to be created. Because he was committed not to just Penn State football, but to Penn State as a university. He was committed to education. He loved this place. And all of us who are a part of Penn State are better as a result. I also remember as a player two years ago, playing against Northwestern, being down three touchdowns, coming back to win Joe Pa's 400th victory, watching players carry him off and seeing that number 400 up on the screen, a number that is never gonna be touched by any coach ever again, because no one has the commitment that Joe Paterno does. I also remember that Joe Paterno taught us about success with honor and that it wasn't enough for him just to win football games, but that he wanted to do it the right way. He wanted to do it with players who were going to graduate and with players who were going to go on to be leaders in their communities and to be great husbands, great fathers. And he really did care as much about his players' character as he did about what kind of football players they were going to be because he knew that our football careers are very short, but that we're going to be husbands and fathers and leaders the rest of our lives. And finally, when I think of Joe Paterno, I'll remember that after every game he ever coached, whether it be a great loss or a great victory, that Joe Paterno knelt down with his players after the game and prayed the Our Father with us. We love you, Joe. And it's my prayer that that Father God that you pray to after each and every game will grant you rest and will let his eternal light shine upon you. Finally, we're gonna have the Blue Band play Amazing Grace. Um, and I just ask that you guys take this time to reflect uh, on the life of Joe Paterno and the memories that he's left us and the legacy that he's left us. <laughs> 